I'm so glad you've come. For your birthday, my dear. Oh, many happy returns. Thank you, thank you. Isabel, may I present my cousin, Francis Lucian? Francis, this is Lady Isabel Vane. How do you do, Mr. Lucian? Oh, Captain Lucian. Captain Lucian, I beg your pardon. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Do you really want to win my pardon? Oh, yes, please. And will you do me the honor of dancing with me? No. No, but I can't. I have to greet my guests and they're not... You mean you're not there. engaged for this dance? No. Then may I? I'd think myself a criminal if I were to miss this opportunity. What does there mean? It means Francis is irresistible. Oh, is he? Perceive I cannot rise. My old enemy, the gout, has taken possession. <laughs> uh, Claret. No, thank you. All right, thank you, Carter. Sit down, sit down. The old said that you wanted to see me. What can I do for you? A rumor reached my ears, my lord, that East Lynn is in the market. Are you here on behalf of my rascally creditors? <laughs> Not at all, my lord. I'm here on behalf of myself. Hmm. <laughs> He got lawyering can't be such bad work. Mm, nor is it. But you must remember my uncle left me a good fortune and my father a large one. Mm, the proceeds of lawyering also. In part, and partly the fruits of successful speculation. Yeah. I have been looking for a property to invest some money upon, and East Lynn would suit me very well, if it is for sale. Before we proceed, I must make one condition of sale quite clear to you. If you buy East Lynn from me, it must be under the rose. Ah. The money that it brings after paying off the mortgage, I must have for my private use. I wouldn't get to spend a penny of it if my confounded creditors got wind of the sale. I see. Last night, I gave a ball for my daughter's birthday. On tick. The servants were hard. On tick for the evening. 
Yes, which is why there's such a disgusting mess in the ballroom now. I understand. If I pay off my debts, I shall be penniless. I shall be bankrupt. Ah, yes. My daughter Isabel. She sings well. Open the door. You'll, you'll hear her better. Forgive me, your, your father and I were listening. We meant no harm. Archibald Carlyle. A lawyer, a friend of mine, and a lover of music. Carlyle, my daughter, Isabel. How do you do, Mr. Carlyle? How do you do, Lady Isabel? Mr. Carlyle's going to help us over our troubles, my dear. Thank you very much, Mr. Carlyle. You're very kind. Oh, I'm happy to be of any assistance. <laughs> young lady to see you. Two. Who do you think? Who oh, but Barbara Hare. Barbara. What brings you here? You were to have come up last night. But I'm sorry I had to be at East Lynn. You're always at East Lynn these days. Mm, I have a great deal of business with the Earl of Mount Seven. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. It's just that I wanted to see you, to tell you secretly that that what? Richard is here. Richard? In West Lynn? He came in disguise, not to the house, to the garden. If father saw him, he'd deliver him up. So why did he come? Archibald, Richard says he's innocent. Sit down, Barbara. He says he was not in the cottage when the murder was committed. The man who did it was a man called Thorn. Thorn? A friend of Affie's, I suppose. He swore to his innocence in the most solemn manner. Mr. Dill? Yes, Miss Carlyle? Does my brother have anyone with him? Uh, no, Miss Carlyle, but he's not to be disturbed. Then why not, pray? Good morning, Barbara. Good morning, Cornelia. What does this mean? Secret meetings with my brother? Not secret at all. Mr. Dill told me you were not to be disturbed and would give me no explanation. What is the mystery? No mystery, Cornelia. My mother had some business with Mr. Carlyle and she wasn't well enough to come, so she sent me instead. What business? Oh, a trifling matter. Nothing to interest you. Archibald, I want to talk to you. Barbara, you know the way out. Now, that young woman is out to marry you, Archibald. <laughs> what? Oh, you may not know it, but she is. What was she doing closeted in here with you? I shall sit here till you tell me. I am your 
your sister. I have a right to know. it is after the rain. Does your father smoke his pipe up here? No. He prefers making a fug with his fellow justices. He won't be home until midnight. Good. Then we're safe from interruption. This is the place. Richard? Barbara? I brought Archibald. Thank you, Barbara. Good evening, Carla. Good evening, Richard. Do you want to talk to me? Yes. I'll go back to the house and keep watch in case Father comes home early. Hmm. Now, I did not kill Hallijohn. Who did? Thorn. Captain Thorne, I think he called himself. Thorne? No, I don't know the name. Well, he used to ride over from Swainson or thereabouts. He came to court Affy. I hated him with his diamond rings and his flash clothes. He was no good for Affy, and I told her so. She just laughed at me. Would you know this Thorne again? I shall never forget him. His fair head of hair and dashing moustache. His flashing white teeth, his cursed black heart. I tell you, his face is burnt into my mind. Good. If we can find him. Why do you say he killed Hallijohn? Well, I went over to Hallijohn's cottage at Abbey Wood. I promised to lend him my gun to have a pop at the partridges. But really, it was to see Affy. I was in love with her. I wanted to marry her. On my way through the wood, I met Otway Bethel. He was always there, poaching. Lad Richard. Hello, Bethel. Going to see Affy. Good hunt. Good poaching. I saw Thorne's horse near the cottage. Well, that meant only one thing. But he was there. I loved her so much, she could do what she liked with me. Hello, Richard. Hello, I think. Aphrodite, if you please. I'm going to start being addressed by my proper name. What's the matter, Alfie? Aren't we friends we used to be? I don't know if we are. Can't I come in, then? No, you can't. Have you got someone else there? No. Whose horse is that, then? I don't know. No one here. Well, let me come in, then. No! I think you've got Thorn there. No, it's not true. Do you swear you haven't got Thorn in the house? Yes, I do. I brought your father my gun. He asked for the loan of it. I'll give it to him. Whatever you hold it. Don't worry about me. Tell him I want it back in a week's time. I'll tell him. Goodbye, Richard. <laughs> in the wood, thinking I'd see Thorn come out of the cottage, and then I could make my peace with Affy. Otway Bethel was still around with his snares. I didn't pay any attention to him. I was just waiting to see Thorn come out of the cottage. And after a time, 20 minutes perhaps, I heard a shot, which seemed to come from the cottage. A moment later, Thorn came panting and tearing out of the cottage door. 
in a state of absolute terror. He tore past me down the path. And I afterwards heard the sound of his horse galloping away. I wonder what was up. He should look so scared. He ran to the house and threw open the door. And the first thing I saw was Hallijohn lying on the floor, dead. With my gun by his side. Well, I, I panicked. I snatched up the gun. Why did you do that? I thought it would look bad if my gun was found next to Hallijohn's body. I made off through the door with it. And I saw Bethel coming towards the cottage. I did the worst thing possible. I flung the gun back in the cottage and I ran for it as fast as I could. Over me. Nothing told against you so much as running away. All owing to my cursed cowardice. And you've been in hiding ever since. What else could I do? The coroner said I killed him. Richard. At the inquest, Daffy swore that there was no one there that day but her and her father and you. Oh, she's lying. There was Thorne. She said she went for a walk in the woods. She heard a shot. She came back to the cottage and saw the body of her father lying there with Bethel standing over it. And Bethel said there was no one there but her and you. And Bethel may be telling the truth. But I don't understand why he didn't see Thorne. Or at least hear him galloping away. I'll talk to him. The person I really want to speak to is Affy. Affy? Well, isn't she here? The whole neighborhood thinks she went off to join you. I haven't seen her since that unlucky day. And that was nearly a year ago. Then the whole neighborhood is wrong. If she went off with anyone, it would have been with Thorne. Wanted to see Joyce Hallijohn, sir. Thank you, Mr. Dill. Now, Joyce, I won't keep you a moment from your duties. I just wanted to, uh, please sit down. Thank you. I just wanted to ask you, did you ever hear of a man called Thorne who came courting your sister, Affy? Half-sister, sir. Yes, yes, I know, half-sister. Did you ever meet or hear of this Thorne? I heard of him, sir. And I told Affy a person of his rank would do her no good. His rank? What was his rank? Well, Affy bragged of his being next door to a lord. Uh, but I don't know. You never met him? No, sir. I only know what Affy told me. And that was precious little. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, sir. Oh, sir. Miss Cornelia asked me to ask you, will you be in to lunch? No, I shan't. I shall be lunching at Eastland. Oh, Papa, I have such news for you. He's got seven children and he's terribly poor. And if he doesn't raise some money soon, he'll be turned out of his house and all his furniture sold. My dear, you haven't greeted Mr. Carlyle. Mr. Carlyle, I greet you. Now, Papa, you mustn't change the subject. He's got seven children and he's terribly poor. Who is? Mr. Kane. What, who came to tune the piano? Yes, and who is giving a concert next week on which it all depends. I have the greatest favor to ask you. Will you grant this? <laughs> well, you don't ask them very often. What is it? I want you to take me to the concert next week at West Lynn. What? And here, rustics scraping the fiddle, my dear, is it? Oh, Papa, he's got seven children, and he's terribly poor. Yes, well, I'm poor myself. But if we promise to be pleasant, all the people for miles around will attend. Why? Yes, we are. <laughs> well, we'll look in for half an hour or so. Oh, thank you, Papa. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Hare. Justice Hare. Good evening, Barbara. Mr. Kane is having a bumper. Thanks to Lady Isabel. She's an angel. I've heard from Cornelia, who said she had an angel's face. 
Did you? I believe I did. Will you pardon me if I quit you for one moment, Barbara? Good evening, Lady Isabel. Has your father not come? I am afraid he has one of his attacks again. And he did so want to be here. Yes, my lady. He sent the carriage. That's enough. Yes, let us hurry. She never shall. She must, Emma. There's nowhere else for her to live. How could you be cajoled into permitting such a thing? I was not cajoled. I proposed it. I will not have Isabel Vane living under my roof. As you wish, but she shall live under mine. Ah, Francis. What are your plans? Oh, well, then. Um, I thought I'd go on staying here with you, if that's all right. I did. I hate her. Why? She has done you no harm. I don't care. I hate her. How does her crime consist of being pretty? You should be pleased she is so pretty. Many a man will be too ready to forget her want of fortune for the sake of her face. Well, she shall marry the first who asks her. I'll take care of that. Don't be me, I'm afraid. I didn't suggest it should be you. Dinner is uh, your ladyship. Thank you, Bates. Come, Francis. No. We will wait dinner for Lady Isabel. Yes, your lordship. Emma, if you can't be kind to Isabel, you might at least be polite. How dare you disgrace yourself? I do not understand you. Three hours, 
three hours now you've been out here hiding yourself with Francis Lucy. Was it so long? Yes. Well, I have not been hiding myself. Much of the time, William has been with us. Yes, I have, Mama. You are allowed asylum in this house, yet you insist on disgracing it. What do you mean? You've done nothing but flirt with Francis from the moment he arrived here. You did nothing else at Christmas. I do not flirt. I have never flirted. I leave that to married women. What? There is but one inmate of this house who flirts, and it is you, not I, Lady Mount Seven. for you little monkey. You shall go straight to bed. <laughs> <laughs> unexpected pleasure. How very glad I am to see you. Business brought me to the area, and I could not leave it again without calling on you. I told you we should meet again. Do you remember? Indeed I do. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't know you were here. This is Lord Vane. How do you do? William, this is Mr. Carlyle, who has been very kind to me. I shall like you, sir, if you are kind to Isabel. Oh, very, very kind. And he lives in East Lynn, which used to be my home. Oh, I don't yet. I've been spending some money on the place, but it's not quite ready. I shall never be as happy as I was at East Lynn. I hope Castle Marling is a happy home for you. No, it is a miserable one, and I cannot remain here. Shall I tell you why? Do, please. No, William. Mama beat her yesterday when she was angry. William, be quiet. Two great slaps upon her cheeks. And I screamed, and Mama beat me, too. But boys were made to be hit. Nurse says they are. A nurse says his spells too good, look it. William, you go to your nursery, or I shall beat you, too. No, you wouldn't. You're much too kind. Go on. Can this be true? I must help you. What can I do? Nothing. What can anyone do? I wish, I wish I could help you. East Lynn was not, take it for all in all, a pleasant home for you. Not a pleasant home. Oh, indeed it was. I would that I could awake and be there again. It would be a very Eden to me now. There is one way in which you can do that. That way I dare not presume, perhaps, to point it out. Lady Isabel, if my words offend you, you will, of course, check them as their presumption deserves. May I... Dare I offer you to return to East Lynn as its mistress? As his mistress? As my wife? Isabel, I have loved you since I first saw you. Uh, Lady Mount Seven. I am sorry that Lord Mount Seven should be absent. I have the honor to be known to him. I am Mr. Carlyle. I have heard of you. I had not heard you were on such intimate terms with Lady Isabel Vane. Madam, we are not on such terms, but I was begging the Lady Isabel that we might become so. I was asking her to be my wife. How very grateful Isabel must be to you. I take it she has accepted your proposal. Will you give me a few hours for consideration? I'm delighted to hear you speak of consideration. May I come back this afternoon? You may. It would be the best thing in the 
worked for her. I presume you'll live at East Lynn. If she agrees. If? But of course she'll agree. A penniless girl like her, what else would she do? I was afraid there might be some other attachment. Attachment? Good heavens, no, not at all. By the way, congratulations. On what? Wasn't it true, then? Lady Mount Seven told me you were going to marry Mr. Carlyle. You are premature in your congratulations. Oh, am I? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, Emma told me for an absolute fact. There you are. I hope you bring it off, Isabel, for your sake. East Lynn is a place to be coveted. And Carlisle's an out and out good chap, one of the best. Yes. I think it'll be good for your future. Well, I wish you all the happiness. Oh, if I must, I'll keep my wishes until the right man comes along. I myself am quite beyond the pale, of course. I cannot hope to indulge in a happy state. But I have my dreams, like others. But a poor man with uh, uncertain prospects is doomed to play the butterfly. Perhaps to his life's end. <laughs> as soon as I could. What's the matter? Is something wrong? Well, why are you here? Pardon. A misfortune has befallen us. Archibald... Don't tell me he's had an accident. Worse, he has run mad. What? Archibald has gone mad and married Lady Isabel Vane. Don't believe it. They were married at Castle Marling by Lord Mount Severn's chaplain. Seems an unsuitable match. Yeah, as Beauty and the Beast. Well, I have taken my resolution. I have moved here and discharged those five dandies of servants he hired. I dismissed the lot and moved myself and my servants here this morning. A fine household Archibald would have with that baby. Be frilled, be jeweled and be curled to direct it. Will she like that? If she doesn't like it, she can lump it. Are you sure you're not jealous of her? Perhaps I am. But if you had brought up a lad, as I have brought up Archibald, and loved nothing else in the whole world, you would be jealous. <laughs> Miss Carlyle say? She's willing that I should be transferred to you, my lady. Oh, good, I'm glad. But she says that, first of all, I ought to acquaint you with certain unpleasant facts in my history. Well, I believe I know something about that. Was not Assie Hallidron your sister? Half-sister, my lady. But she went off after Richard Hare, and we've never heard of her since, nor of him, neither. It was a dreadful thing to happen, and to such a nice family, Mrs. Hare and Miss Barbara. The Hares will come in tonight? Yes, my lady. And is that the same Barbara Hare that I heard you gossiping about the other day? About her giving me a bowl of poison? Oh, it was only a bit of nonsense, my lady. I'm sorry you heard it. But I did. The fact is that people think Miss Barbara was in love with Mr. Carlyle, and many thought it might be a match. I shall wear the black lace tonight, Joyce. Yes, my lady. <laughs>
had to leave so soon. Mama's not very well. Ever since Richard. Oh, yeah. Bad. <sighs> Poor Mama has been so sad and silent ever since. Mm. sung you at least ten songs. You ought to pay me for them. And I shall. <laughs> Justice begin haymaking. Barbara. I asked you when your papa cuts his hay. No. What caused all that? You asked me. You asked me. I must ask you, Barbara, since I don't understand you. You don't understand. You don't care. If I've offended you, I'm truly sorry. Truly sorry? What do you care about me? You have a wife to care about. What's my misery to you? My dear Barbara, I never gave you to understand that I felt for you, except as a brother. A brother? No, please, be calm and reasonable. I am reasonable. And I shall ask you one reasonable question. If she had not come between us, would you have cared for me? I don't know. How can I know? How can I tell what might have been? I'd rather it were not known. The whole of West Lynn coupled us together in their gossip. They have nothing but pity for me now. I would rather be dead. Oh, Barbara. I am so very, very sorry. I only hope we can be friends. As good friends as ever we were. Forget it was uttered. I have told you I would do so. And you won't... You won't tell your wife? Of course not. You swear it? Certainly, if you want me to. For my sake. Do you like that toy? Yes. Yes, I do. An expensive toy he bought you. 120 guineas it cost. I thought it was past the time. Archibald is so long. Barbara Hare is an old friend. 
It's very pretty. Yes. I wonder Archibald never fell in love with her. <laughs> He's far too sensible to fall in love. Until he went mad and married you. The most expensive toy of all. the honor of once more addressing Lady Isabel Vane. I do beg your pardon. I should have said Lady Isabel Carlyle. Captain Lucen. But this is quite extraordinary. Well, can he be doing in a dreadful place like this? Well, I have been unwell and am ordered to the seaside. Who are you? And Mr. Carlyle is well? Yes, he is very well. He left for England only this morning. And you? Are you in Boulogne on leave of absence from the army, Captain Lucy? Oh, I left the army. Or should I say, I sold out. The truth to tell, things haven't been going very well with me at the moment, Lady Isabel. No? My uncle's behaved shamefully. He's married again. Yes, so I heard. Yes. He's 73 years old, you know. Old fool. If it's not beyond the bounds of possibility, he may have a son. But your children. You see, I had news of you from the Mount Sevens. Three, I believe. Yes. I was sorry not to bring them here. You did well. You do indeed look pale. Yes. Yes, I am rather tired. I... I told my servant to return in an hour, but I shall return without waiting. Good morning, Captain Lucy. No, I, I shall see you safely, huh? Oh, no, I am quite able. I see it. I shall see you to your armchair, otherwise I shall not be happy. I, I really am quite able to go by myself. I'm sure you came to Boulogne for better reasons than to act as an escort. I came to Boulogne for the refreshing sea dips. But I shall devote myself to an entirely more worthy object. Didn't you write and tell me you were coming? I would have been at the boat to meet you. I started too suddenly. I beg your pardon? Oh, this is Captain Lucen, Lady Mount Seven's cousin. I wrote to Miss Sophia. Oh, yes. Yes, we've met, I believe. I've been escorting your wife on some of her walks. She's so much stronger. Yes. I'm much obliged to you. Won't you join us? Oh, please. My duty is complete. Archibald. Yes. I... I have a favor to ask of you, and you must promise to grant it me. What is it? Oh, but that is not promising. I grant you anything that's within my power. I want you to stay with me the rest of the time that I must remain here. My dear, how could you wish anything so unlikely? It's circuit time. Well... Then take me with you back to England. No. Not when I find the change is doing you so much good. Well, I... I can't stay here without you. 
<laughs> Why? Because... Because uh, I'm so dull without you. We must get you to amuse her, Lucy. Not unless you can satisfy these claims you've been telling me of. Don't Sir Peter help you? I think you'd mind if I could explain things to him. But I'm dead set foot over there and get dropped off. I mean, the bare idea of debtor's prison scares me half to death. Someone might see him for you. Someone? Who? I quarrel with my lawyers. Oh. Pity. Oh, when I come into the Lucian estates, they'll be ready to eat their ears off. Until then. Shall I see him for you? It's extremely generous of you, Miss Carla. No, not at all. I have to be in England in a few days. I could see your uncle next week. Will you? I shall be happy to, in return for your kind attentions to my wife. No, 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 not as a solicitor, as a friend. when we drove through the forest together. You and I, Mrs. Vane and the others. Yes. Well, you drove Mrs. Vane home badly, I suppose. For she swore that you should never drive her again. <laughs> I drove her recklessly on purpose. She's perfectly suited to her name, you know. Vane. She's the most capricious, exacting woman I've ever met. Dear Emma. I did it to pay her out. Why? What had she done to you? She put me into bad humor. Saddled herself upon me when I wanted another to be my companion. Mm. Blanche Chaloner. Blanche Chaloner. Can't you guess better than that? Isabel. The past is gone and cannot be recalled. But if ever two beings were made to love each other, you and I were, I sometimes Captain thought Z that we... Let me speak, Isabel. No. A few words, a few short words, than I have done forever. I would have declared myself had I dared, but my, my uncertain position, my debts, my inability to keep a wife, these things weighed me down, made me, made me crush the hope within me. I will not hear this, Captain Newsom. I knew I loved you, but not how passionately, until you became the wife of another. How dare you? I've said it can do no harm. Neither you or I are likely to forget that you are a wife. I would have avowed my affection to you at first and not let you throw yourself away on Carlyle. Throw myself away. Mr. Carlyle is my very dear husband. Look at him. What are you by his side? You forget yourself. I do not. You would not speak this way if Mr. Carlyle were here. I bid you good day, sir. Forgive me. I will not offend again. But there are moments when one's, when one's true feelings break through the rules of life. You are a gentleman, sir. You will let me proceed by myself. I shall follow you to your door to give you protection. I fear the walk is likely to prove arduous, as I leave for East Lynn immediately. Well, I suppose we have rooms ready for visitors. Yes, I believe so. Good, because I'm expecting one. I, I forgot to mention it earlier. Oh? Who is coming? Captain Lucy. Who? Francis Lucy. His uncle consents to see him, but his aunt absolutely refuses to have him at Lucy Park. So I've offered to give him house room here. Archibald, I do not wish him to stay at East Lynn. Only be for a few days. Seems to me to be a decent enough fellow. He doesn't pay his debts, but that's no more than a hundred others. And his manners are good, don't you think? Archibald, please. Isabel, you will welcome him. I will receive him if you wish me to. I will never welcome him. 
Remarkably pretty girl coming to the house. Who is she? Barbara Hare, a friend. She really is deliciously pretty. Almost as pretty as you. Did you address me, sir? Merely an observation. But I fancy you heard what I said. Miss Hare. Barbara. Archibald, I must speak to you. And what state secrets have you to disclose? I have seen Thorne. What? Where? In West Lynn, with Tom Herbert and his brother. When? Less than an hour ago. Oh, we stopped and spoke, and the Herberts introduced Thorne as a man who was staying with them. Uh, and do you think he could be our man? Well, he answers Richard's description. Army officer, good-looking, curly hair and a moustache. It's a pity. Since the beautiful Barbara will not join us in the drawing room. Well, she is probably talking to my husband, or to Cornelia. Aren't you jealous? I mean, if she was talking to your husband. She is probably talking to Cornelia. They are old friends. Ah, it seems it is not Miss Carlyle. A lady Isabel thought the beautiful Barbara Hare was paying you a social visit. It seems that Barbara is too involved with my brother to pay social calls. I heard them whispering together in the library. What secrets they have in common is evidently not for our consumption. Oh, no, no, no. I must stand up for your husband, Lady Isabel. I would not wish to have secrets with such a beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. A gentleman to see you, sir. A Captain Thorne. Bring him in. Come in, please. Good of you to come so quickly. Do sit down. You were not in West Lynn some years ago? I believe I was in the neighborhood a few years ago. Why? I'm inquiring for my own satisfaction into a sad affair that took place, what, seven years ago? Yes. Seven years ago I was here. Uh, but I tell you in confidence, I don't wish to have it known. An affair of garage. Yes, and the girl was Affie Hallijohn. Affie who? Affie Hallijohn. You are mistaken. Never heard the name in my life. Wilson, was not that Miss Eyre who came to the door a moment ago? Yes, my lady. She wanted to see the master. I told her your ladyship was at home, but she wouldn't enter. And did she leave any message? She said she hoped to see him this evening. We are invited to dine at the Jeffersons tonight. Do you go? Yes. Archibald and I need a change of some sort. And leave Captain Lucian alone? Well, he can dine alone or do what he pleases. Are you going to the Jeffersons? No. Well, then there is no difficulty with Captain Lucian. I do not want his company. I am not fond of him. Mm -hmm. I would go to the Jeffersons, but that I should require a new dress. Yes. I want one too. You? You have two dozen or more. Wilson. Yes, my lady. Will you send to the dressmaker, telling her I wish to see her as soon as possible? Wilson, you will do nothing of the sort. You may go, Wilson. Yes, madam. 
You will be sorry for your behavior when your husband is broke to poverty. He works like a horse, but your expenses are in a fair way to ruin him. <laughs> husband to protect you from him. Closeted away with his friend Barbara, I suppose. Yes. Barbara. They told me at the house you were here. I have a message from Richard. Tonight? Yes. We must contrive that he shall see Thorn. How? It must be done. I'll find a way. Oh, thank you, Archibald. <laughs> Did you forget the Jefferson's dying at six? No, but it was impossible for me to get here sooner. You must dress quickly. Isabel, I can't come with you. Why so? Some business has arisen. What business? Some important private business. I, I must snatch some dinner here and rush back to the office. To meet someone? Yes. Who? Isabel, you must not be vexed. I assure you it's no fault of mine. I, I am sorry it's happened. But you never return to the office in the evening. No, but this is something I can't delegate. Shall you join us later? I believe I shall not be able to do so. Thank you, Wilson. What time do you expect Lady Isabel to return? She was going to order the carriage to be at the Jefferson's at half past nine, sir. The Jefferson's? How far is the Jefferson's? About 20 minutes, sir, in the carriage. Thank you. Watch for your father. Richard's inside. You showed him Thorn? Yes. And? He was not the man. I suppose she's dining at the Jefferson's tonight. I ought to have been there, but... Oh, Archibald, I am sorry. Forgive me.
luck. I thought it was your carriage. Could you oblige me with a ride to the house? I've been out for a stroll. I'm rather tired. I did not know you. What is that thing that you have on? It is like a disguise. Disguise? No. No. I have no creditors in the neighborhood of East Lynn. What are we going to do now? The first thing is the same as it always was, to find the real thorn. As I was walking by the hare's place just now, I saw two people enjoying a moonlight tete-a-tete. A couple lovingly. Your husband and the hare girl. I cannot thank you enough for what you're doing for Richard. Fear I've done nothing that's been of any real use to him. Don't say that. You've given him money which has kept him from starving. And you've given him hope. God bless you for that. I will not deceive you, though he may be doing so. She's a very pretty girl. He obviously has a taste for pretty girls. his love, but you found mine. He may be false to you, but I shall never be. Leave him, leave him. You can leave your life of misery and come to happiness. Your father is fortunately late again. He must have gone on to a friend's house. I see, Mother. Now I must go. Dear Richard. Goodbye to you. Thank you. God bless you, Richard. My lady, are you ill? Yes. Yes, Joyce Ellen Wretched. What can I do, my lady? All I want from you, Joyce, is a promise. Yes, my lady. No matter what happens to me, you will stay with my children. You promised it once before, Joyce. Promised again. You will stay at East Lynn with my children, no matter what happens. Promise. I promise. Who's that? Archibald. What's the matter? Is someone ill? I, I think Isabel might be. I can't find her. Can't find her? What's the time? Isn't she in bed? Three o'clock. She hasn't been to bed. I've looked all over the house. Oh, perhaps she's with the children.
there. I understand it all now. And you drove her to it. A gentle-minded, fair lady like her. To be curbed and snapped at. Worse than one of your servants. And she never complained to the master, not once. She bore it all like a saint until she could stand it no longer. I understand her words now. I couldn't before. Oh, sir, may heaven support you in this terrible trial. It was my fault. No. No. Her letter is addressed to me. When my children ask where their mother is and why she left them, tell them that you, their father, goaded her to it. If they ask what she is, tell them also, if you will. But tell them that you drove her to the very depth of desperation as she quitted them in her despair. God be merciful to this dishonored house. Surely come. My lady sees that I'm right. Patience of God. Monsieur looks so well. Suzanne, you may leave the room. Isabel. Why did you come now? Is that how the flanks a fellow gets for travelling hundreds of miles? Now, I thought you'd have been glad to welcome me. I might have been glad if you'd come back in time. Yes, of course, I meant to. As soon as I set foot in London, I was overwhelmed with business consequent on my uncle's death. You're lying. How dare you say I'm lying? Mr. Carlyle had got his divorce. You knew that, but you concealed it from me. Isabel, you must be aware. It's an awful sacrifice for a man in my position to marry a divorced woman. The sacrifice would not have been for my sake, but for the sake of the child, our child. Surely you understand. I'm the representative of an ancient baronetcy. And to make you my wife would so offend all my family. You need not trouble to find excuses. The damage to the child cannot now be repaired. I was thinking of you. Well, I can't imagine a worse fate than spending the rest of my life with you. Oh, well. You've taken a sudden aversion to me. I cannot be helped. No, I agree. You kicked up enough fuss once about my making reparation. Oh, the reparation in your power to make could not undo my sin. Sin? <laughs> oh, no. Now, you ladies really should think of that beforehand. Yes. Yes, you sinned, as you call it. Not because of my temptations, but because of your jealous anger towards your husband. Quite true. You were blindly, outrageously jealous of him and the hair girl. Yes, I was. You were the least of it. Simply a person who happened to be there. Well, I don't believe for a minute that you had anything to be jealous about. What do you mean? They had a secret between them. They were partners. Out of love. In business. They were never lovers. How do you know? I have heard scraps of their conversation from time to time.
I didn't know what you told me at the time. Didn't I? Oh, well. All the stratagems are fair in love and war. And where is she? She like me? I would rather have her dead. My room prepared for me. No, it is not. Why not? Now, I don't have to be back in London for a couple of days. The apartments have been transferred into my name. Ah. They can never again afford you accommodation. We're mortal enemies, then. Is my baby dead? Mon baby est mort. Mr. Dell. Excuse me, sir. Will you uh, let me ask if you've heard any particular news? No, of the failure of Kenton Green. Yes, I've heard that. Uh, no, sir. It's not there. What is it, then? I'm glad that I'm in time. You should have a moment to prepare yourself. For what? It's in here, sir, in the column of the deaths. Prepare yourself before you look at it. Say, sir, that 
You're engaged to him. Anyone who calls. My dear, the most dreadful news. Why? What is so dreadful? Isabel Bain is dead, killed in a railway accident in France. Ooh, better for her. Irma, how could you say that? Oh, don't be so hypocritical. You know quite well she brought disgrace on all connected with her. No one could ever have taken any notice of her again. Let me read it. If you can. She wrote it when she was dying. Well, we should all be grateful. It is a blight removed from the family. It was that ale that gave it me. How could ale give it to you? Unless you drank it in great draught when you were in a state of perspiration. You'll be a baby to the end of your days, Archibald. When do I ever drink great draughts of ale? No, I was down in the cellar this morning seeing to the tapping of a new barrel, and the cellar struck like an ice house, and I was there for 20 minutes or more. Does it take so long to tap a barrel of ale? No, no, it doesn't when things are in order, but it does when you have to bother over the taps, rejecting one and then another. Well, what time is it? Just nine. Well, I think I'll go to bed. There's one thing excellent for a cold in the head, and that's to double your flannel petticoat crossways and put it on over your nightcap. I'll do it. Yes, I would. Good night. Good night, Cornelia. Cornelia. May I say one word before you go? When I married Isabel, you reproached me with having kept you in the dark. Well, if you consulted me, as any Christian would, the disgrace which fell on this house would have been spared to it. I believe you have never wholly forgiven me. No, I never shall. I did not deserve the slight. I, your elder sister, who have been a mother to you almost since you were a boy. I do not intend to court your displeasure a second time for a similar offense. What does that mean? I'm about to marry. Oh, for the love of common sense, don't go and make such a fool of yourself. You've done it once. Wasn't that enough for you? Cornelia, can you wonder I don't speak to you of such things when you treat me just as you did when I was a child? When folks behave childishly, they deserve to be treated as children. And whom have you chosen this time to go and disgrace us like the last one did? I am marrying to please myself. As you did the last time? Yes, as I did the last time. Well, can't you open your mouth and say who it is? No, I have not asked her yet. She may not have me. I know who it is. It's that stuck-up Louisa Channing. Well, you are an idiot. You really are. If that may be. And since you are unlikely to approve my choice, you will, I assume, wish to return to your own home. Why, well, I shall do nothing of the sort. I shall stop you. What's the end of me? It cannot be. Who says so, Louisa? I do. Have you forgotten the night that Isabel left and the words spoken by Joyce? You will not find a better mistress of a house than I have made you. Don't expect to. <laughs> you speak as though you think I'll poison your wife if I stay here. I think I know what you did to my first wife. I take care not to run the same risk a second time.
sure Madame Bean is just what we want. She's English by birth, but the widow of a Frenchman. She knows French and German and music. She's been with the Latimers for two years now, and they say she's an absolute treasure and wouldn't be parting with her but for Helena's marriage. What's this treasure's name? Veen, you said? Mm. Spelt vine, pronounced Veen, apparently. Mrs. Latimer says we mustn't mind her appearance. She's the oddest looking person. Oh dear, shall we laugh? <laughs> I hope not. But she wears spectacles and large bonnets, and she has a rather large scar on the side of her face from some old accident. And she has a slight limp and grey hair, but she can't be more than 30, probably the result of the same accident. <laughs> This sounds like the Wicked Witch in a fairy tale. Oh, darling, don't say such things. And you're determined to have her? I think I am. I suppose she might be useful for frightening the children. This is your sitting room, madame. Would you like a fire lighted here, madame, for tonight? No, thank you. Can I do anything for you, madame? No, thank you. If you do want anything, please ring and Wilson will come up. Thank you. Oh, my mistress will be glad to see you if you're not too tired in the drawing room. Shall I tell her you come? Yes. Madame. Do you think you can find your way to the drawing room alone, Madame? Yes. Yes, I'm sure I can. Madame Veen, I hope you are not too tired after your journey. You're not unwell, are you? No. You look so pale. I am generally, but my health is good. Oh, do please sit down. Mrs. Latimer wrote us word that you would be sure to suit us, and we, in turn, hope that your residence with us will be agreeable. Have you lived much in England? In the early portion of my life. And you lost your husband and your children, Mrs. Latimer said. Yes, I have lost them. It must be terrible grief to lose a child. I know I would not lose my baby for all the world. Terrible grief. No doubt you know from Mrs. Latimer that the children under your care are not mine. They are the children of Mr. Carlyle's first wife. And Mr. Carlyle. And Mr. Carlyle, of course. Their mother left them. It was a shocking business. She is dead now, I hear. Yes. She is dead. And you, I dare say you never thought to go out as governess. I was born and reared a gentlewoman. Your husband could not leave you well off, I fear. When I lost him, I lost everything. If you please, ma'am, the baby's undressed and quite ready for you. Thank you, I'll have him here. Mm. 
Shall I wait, Mum? No, I ring. My fallen baby. He's the very image of my darling husband. My darling. Oh. Darling, I have such news for you. And I for you. Baby's been allowed to stay up just this once. And how are you, my son? You must call him by his proper name, Arthur Archibald. I was sorry it couldn't be just Archibald, but that was already taken. Darling, we have someone here, Madame Veen. Forgive me, I didn't see you. How do you do, Madame Veen, and welcome to East Lynn. Thank you. Would you forgive me? I am tired and should like to retire. Of course. And you will ring for anything you want in the way of refreshment. Yes, I will. Good night, Mrs. Carlyle. Good night, Madame Veen. Good night, Madame. Isn't she droll-looking? I can't think why she wears those spectacles. They're so disfiguring. She puts me in mind of... Of whom? No one in particular. I haven't told her my news. Oh, tell me then. Today, I was asked by a responsible body of men to stand as the Member of Parliament for West Lynn. And you accepted, I hope? <laughs> of course. Hooray! Carlisle forever! This isn't the schoolroom, you know. Isn't it? The schoolroom's upstairs. This is for our meals and a room for you in the evening. And doesn't Archibald have his meals with us? No, he's too young. And he doesn't have lessons either. But I expect he will soon. Oh, yes, when he gets bigger. But he's not big enough yet to do French. You're much bigger than he is, aren't you, Isabel? <laughs> her name's Lucy. Why do you call her Isabel? I thought I heard your parents call her Isabel. My name is Isabel Lucy. But I don't know who could have told you about the Isabel. I never called it since Mama went away. And uh, where did she go? She was kidnapped. Kidnapped? A wicked man came on a visit to Papa and he stole her. Papa said I was never to be called Isabel again, but Lucy. Isabel was Mama's name. Mama didn't love us. She wouldn't have left us. I'm sure she loved you. Loved you very much, William. You can't tell that, Madame Veen. You weren't here. You didn't know Mama. <coughs> Drink some water, William. It'll do you good. <coughs> Man. Madam Bean, pray sit down. It's about William. Does it not strike you this is an ugly cough of his? Well, yes, sir. I, I think it wants care. Yes, I, I'm most concerned. I had intended to take him to Dr. Martin at Lindborough, but I have been so much engaged. Well, let me take him, sir. You can trust him with me. Yes, indeed I can. When will you leave? Tomorrow? Yes, as soon as I can. The doctor's fee will be a guinea. Well, let me pay for him myself. I, I would rather do so. No, no, no. That's most kind of you, but he's not your child. Some gentlemen to see you, sir. Mr. Carlyle! Shh! Have you heard of it is who's putting up against you? No. It's that blackguard Lucen. Lucen? Sir Francis Lucen. It's an insult to you. He's mad to offer himself as a candidate. Well, as Lord Headley's secretary, he probably had no choice. 
The noble lord needs every vote he can buy in the commons. Sir Peter left Lewiston a tidy fortune. No longer so tidy. He married an expensive wife. They do say he has to get into Parliament, otherwise he'll be arrested for debt. Oh. Well, of course you'll go for him. Neck and crop. There's a meeting at the Buck's Head at five. I shall see you there. I heard that Lucen was staying at the Buck's Head, or was trying to. <laughs> He's probably ousted by now. <laughs> I had a word with the landlord. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dill. Free and independent voters of West Lynn. I have come before you today to stand as candidate in this ancient constituency. You, sir, be quiet. I come before you today to stand in this parlor as your representative for the forthcoming parliamentary elections. I know, I know what time you have had of What's your name? Loose to me, Bethel. How are you, Dill? So you're still kicking Ebenezer. What's all this? The election, that's all. Yes, I know, but what's all this row? Uh, the candidate's wasting his breath. Loose. I know some of you farmers, some of you I know, who have suffered many hardships in the last... Rather, uh, the ratherest of him to oppose Carlyle. Infamous. Contemptible. Who's the fellow speaking for him? On the balcony. That is Lucy. I know what it is like to be penniless. To be penniless and starving. I have fought for this country. <laughs> By Jove. He, Sir Francis Lucen. Do you know Lucen, Mr. Bevel? We're a little. Once. that that baronet there would be member for West Lynn. Used to dodge about Abbey Wood once. Mad at Laffy Halley John. And how do you know this? I saw him. <laughs> I was a bit spoony myself after Laffy in those days. Went down there a good deal. Only he didn't call himself Lucen then. And what did he call himself? you're still here, sir. What's the matter? I found out about the tour. It's that man, Lucian. How long will it be before I die? Tell me, William. Who 
Who said anything about your dying? Wilson did the other day. I wasn't asleep. I heard her. Hmm. Well, Wilson talks great nonsense, you know. She always did. Well, what did Dr. Martin say? He doesn't talk nonsense. He said he's going to see you again next week when he comes to West Lynn. He must be really ill, then. If he's coming that far. Yes, you are ill, William. But you'll get better again. Oh, I don't want to die, Madame Bean. I don't want to die. Oh, there, there, my darling. You're not going to die. You're not going to die. Shh. What, all in the dark? And your fire's going out. That on the sofa. William! You ought to be in bed. Oh, no, Mama. Off you go. I'll come up and see you. Good night, Madame Bean. Good night, William. What did Dr. Martin say? Um, he said the lungs were undoubtedly affected. Very little else. I could see he had formed an opinion, but... He said he's going to see William again next week when he comes to West Lynn. Perhaps he'll tell me, as William's mother. Yes, I suppose he will. On a different topic. May I say that both Mr. Carlyle and I disapprove of your giving presents to the children, toys and things. You must have spent a great deal of your salary on them. Pray do not continue, Madame Bean. I have no one else to spend my money on. You have yourself. Oh, but I must give them a little token of love from time to time. <laughs> that you're welcome to do. A little token. <laughs> take you out of this into my office. No, darling, I'll stay with you. You and the government were stupid to go on with it. You ought to have withdrawn in time. I'm no coward, Meredith. Besides, I'm just beginning to enjoy this game. Now I shall go on to the bitter end. How lovely his wife is. I say, Lucy, was his first as good? Terrible crush. Things off me at once. Francis Luce and I arrest you for the willful murder of George Hallijar. Devil. I've had the warrant in my hands since yesterday afternoon. I couldn't come across you last night. You told them. Not I. My God. You stinking barbie, I'll kill you. Hold fast now, oh, you. Oh, I'll kill you. Oh, I'll kill you. Hold fast. Bethel, I arrest you. Oh, I'm a good devil. In the murder of George Alijar. I swear. I'm innocent. Well, we've only got to prove it. Come on. 
Pedro. But what does all this mean? It means that your brother is free and safe. This is your doing, Carlisle! Lucian's been arrested! Hurrah! Hurrah! Lucian's been arrested! Call, please, will you? Lucian's been arrested! I beg your pardon. I, I didn't know you were here, Doctor. I beg your pardon, Doctor. What's that you said? He's been arrested. For debt? No, for murder. For a murder done 12 years ago that Mrs. Carlyle's brother was supposed to have done. Mm. Pray sit down, madame. No, I, thank you. May I get you a glass of water? Yes. Madame Bean, is Dr. Martin there? Yes, examining William. Are you all right, madame? Thank you, Mr. Dill. Well, that's enough of that, eh, William? Mr. Dill, look after William, will you please? Yes. Would you like to see where I work? Yes. Please. <laughs> Dr. Martin, I must know the truth without disguise. The signs of consumption are showing themselves all too plainly. H how can consumption come to him? It's not in the family. Pardon me. Your late wife's mother died of it. Her family was sadly blighted by the disease. Is there no hope? None. The lungs are extensively diseased. I... Oh. You are ill, madam. I'm sorry. Okay, sit down here. Thank you. Thank you. I am well enough. You must see to the child. <laughs> I mean, Mama that was. Where do you mean, William? In heaven. She will be there. But can I be sure she will be there? I've nearly forgotten what she was like. Never fear, William. She has not forgotten you. But can I be sure she will be there? You know, she wasn't quite good. Do you think she grew good and asked God to forgive her? Oh, William, her whole life, her whole life after she left you, her sorrow was greater than she could bear. And, and what? And her heart broke. What makes you so sure? I know it. But you could only know it by her telling you. Did you meet her abroad? Yes, I, I met her abroad. Oh, why did you never tell us? What was she like? Well, she was, she was very like you and Lucy. Was she pretty? Yes, she was pretty. Call me. Don't let me fall, please. Don't let me fall. You can't fall, William. You can't let, fall. Let, let me You're fall, on the bed. please. Shh. And how that 
duty field. I'm down in the prison in Nimbra. I wonder how he feels after yesterday. Head not too firm in his shoulders, I should say. Is he condemned? He's condemned. And good luck to him. I'm not way careful. He's turned Queen's evidence and has let loose again. Good luck to him, too. Trying pair they make. Would you like me to sit here for a spell? No. Ring if you want me. I think. Papa, I want Joyce. Yes, she'll be home soon. She's with your mama. She's with some work again. How shall I know Mama in heaven? Not this mama. She will be in heaven, you know. Yes. Yes. Madame Vin knows she will. She met her abroad. Mama told her. What was it, Madame? Mama was more sorry than she could bear, and her heart broke, and she died. I beg your pardon, sir. The boy seemed troubled. I said what he wanted to hear. Did you meet his mother abroad? No, sir. Don't pop up, please. I like it dark. Just come back. Goodbye, Lucy. Goodbye, William. But I'm not going anywhere. Goodbye, Archie, dear. Goodbye. I'm going to heaven. To that bright blue sky, you know. Take them away, Madam Bean, please. Did you know that Mama's heart broke? Papa, did you know that Mama's heart broke? I think it was because she hadn't got us. Yes, I think so, too. Are you in pain, William? I can't breathe. I can't swallow. I, I wish Joyce was here. She's with your mama. I'm going to fetch her. I won't be long. I'll say goodbye to me.
Paul's gone for her. Not her. I. I. <coughs> William. William. <gasps> William! Oh, he's been wanting me. I. Oh. I fear she's worse, sir. She sacrificed her own health for William. Her strength seems beyond recovery. I hardly think she will last till morning. Archibald, is it possible that Madame Veen could have caught William's complaint? No, 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 quite impossible. Such a disease could only be inherited. Has Dr. Martin returned? No, sir, it would be no use. No use. Is that any way to treat dying people? Dying? Let me see her. Oh, no, Mom, you must not come up. And who's to stop me? Mom. Mom, please. You dare come back here. My children. Oh, forgive me. Forgive me. I could have made your home happier. And I wish I had done so. I have wished it ever since you left. Archibald, you will want to be alone with her. Joyce. That jealousy of you, mistaken jealousy. Will you not say a word of love before I pass on to it? Only one word. My heart is breaking for it. I nearly broke my heart when you left me. Thank 
hold her in your heart for your poor lost Isabel. Why are you leaving me? For your correct faith, I must get help. It is not a 